Hey everybody, coming up next on Sports Central, we have the very best in local and state news, a little bit of national thrown in there as well, but stick around for this edition of Sports Central. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson, my co-host, Mr. Neil Duncan, to my right, to your left on your television dial or screen. Hello, Neil. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Uh, this first segment of Sports Central brought to us by the Florida Department of Citrus, and uh, I'm excited about this show. We, uh, this is we're in the season. We're in the season with a lot of visitors here in Polk County, and of course, it really doesn't slow down for us anymore. But uh, this is the heavy season, and a lot of economic impact. <laughs> Uh, right now going on. <laughs> he says the heavy season. I'll tell you why he says that. It's sort of a Flo Freudian slip. It's barbecue month or barbecue season. That's not what I was saying. That is not what I was saying at all. So the bottom line is <laughs> Neil is going to be hitting the barbecue circuit as am I. Wow. And so the heaviness is uh, going to be visible as well as uh, attacks on our mental capacities to figure out what we're going to eat, when we're going to eat it. Well, I'm not sure that's where I was going with it, but I see what you did there. But, uh, <laughs> that's where I was one going. Of the great, <laughs> one of the great events, obviously, is Smoke on the Water. Uh, great Congratulations, by the way, on your Seminoles. Well, I didn't really have anything to do with it, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Win the national championship. I didn't and, mean to uh, interrupt you. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. But, Looking uh, very handsome today. You just... Uh, why don't you introduce our guests <laughs> before we get derailed any we, further? <laughs> we do this annually, and it is one of our favorite shows simply because the event is one of my favorite events as, as well as Neil's. It's called Smoke on the Water. We have Walt Hall and we have Frank Schmoes with us, who are two of the architects and uh, linchpins, I don't know if maybe that's the correct phrase, but it is today, <laughs> of, of Smoke on the Water. Fantastic, world-class food, that is. Uh, great world-class entertainment, and it is just an all-around good time. More importantly, it goes to a great cause. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us, and uh, wow. Well, thank you, Mark. I can't tell you where the, I can't yeah. say where the last time I saw you, but uh, so we'll leave it at that. Well, nice. nice being here. Good to see As you, As usual too. here. It is uh, barbecue season here in uh, Polk County. Well, let's, he let's hear the Reader's Digest version for those uh, <laughs> of our listeners that don't know what Smoke on the Water is all about. I mean, the signs are everywhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of social media out there, uh, newspapers promoting it, and, and you know, you guys just do an unbelievable job. But for the visitor or for our viewers that, uh, that don't know, all right, it's let's hear it. Tenth annual, can you believe it? Ten years wow. that we've been doing this, and so it's our tenth year anniversary. Uh, Budweiser Smoke on the Water Barbecue Competition, and uh, got some great people behind us that made this event even better. I mean, how do you make uh, this event better, you know? But we did uh, RX Development, uh, Indian River, Texas Cattle Company, of course, has been with us since the, uh, the very beginning. Uh, 2400 Havendale Boulevard, it's the Boys and Girls Club right on Lake Cannon, beautiful Lake Cannon, the chain of lakes there in Winter Haven off of uh, Havendale Boulevard. On the north side of Lake Cannon. Uh, on the north side, yes, right. yes. And uh, next Saturday, February 1st, from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. is right, right about there is when the awards are going to happen. We find out who the 10th annual Smoke on the Water Barbecue Competition Grand Champion is at that time. So throughout that day, we got 80 of the best teams from all over the country going to be competing for this Grand Championship. Uh, you know, we got the uh, New Electric Pro Division and the Publix Backyard Division, which is pitting some really great local enthusiast barbecue guys against each other. Uh, throwing down some just some of the best barbecue you can have anywhere. Not only you hit it on the head, we got great entertainment all day long on four stages of entertainment this year. All right. Then we have not only all the music genre for everybody. All right. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of music for uh, for all walks. And then we also have uh, the Cypress Gardens water ski team doing two shows on uh, Lake Cannon. And uh, we got a kids area, yeah, interactive kids area, and uh, just a great day. Come out with the family. And the main reason we do all this, and you're going to be eating great barbecue, listening to great music, watching the world's best water skiers, and kids are going to be having a good time. You're benefiting the Citrus Center Boys and Girls Clubs, taking care of the kids here uh, in uh, our local community. So it's, 
That's the reason we do this, Mark. Well, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that a little bit. I don't think you took a breath during that whole. No. <laughs> you, well, thanks for coming on. We'll see you later. Uh, but you talk and this show brought to you by. <laughs> you talk about the Citrus Center Boys and Girls Club in Winter Haven, and and it's not a portion of the proceeds that is going to the Citrus Club of Winter. It's. 100% of proceeds are going to the Boys and Girls Club. Talk to us a little bit about that and what that means to the Boys and Girls Club of Winter well, Haven. Let me tell you what it means. This, this thing started 10 years ago, about the time the economy tanked. Mm -hmm. And right after we had opened a third club in Lake Wells, uh, and that club has kind of been in debt every year since we've opened it, by the way. And so in reality, this event, without this event, we would have closed at least one of our clubs and maybe two. Wow. And we'd have had to walk away from some of our kids. So very, very important. It's been uh, one of the most successful events. It's been the most successful event I've ever been involved with. You know, we made $30,000 the first year out, which was huge really for a first time event. Uh, but it's grown and it's grown and we've raised lots of money. It's been because of, this guy's hard work and, the, and all the people on the committee, Frank and Janet, Rick and Marcy, uh, Kevin, uh, everybody, Grant, all these people that have worked on this thing over the years, worked, worked hard, you know, people that we depend on. The teams, we can't do it without the teams. We can't do it without the judges. We can't do it without the volunteers that show up on that day. The we can't do it without the committee. We have a small committee that works themselves sick every year yeah. to get the same put together. And last but not least, we can't do it without the crowd. We can't do it without the public. And we've tried to keep this thing family friendly. We charge one dollar to get in, which is nothing. We actually charge for parking a little bit now, but we have a, a five dollar parking at the school right across and right at the, at the funeral home, but, but we have two huge free lots. We have a free lot, I call it the airport road, where you turn to go to the airport, and the, and the best place for people to go to park is Champions Church. You go down there, you park for free, you climb on a bus, and it drops you right off of the gate. And if I was coming to the event, that's where I'd go to park. And so we still you know, have places you can park for free, and we try to make this a place where families can come with their money and spend it on food, and spend it on the, their drinks and, and have a great day, you know, and not, you know, us. And so we're not grabbing all the money from our families to get into the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're yeah, trying to help a, our families yeah, and at the same time help our kids. Donation yeah. of a dollar, yeah. you know. Well, you know, this show, is, of course, is a great deal about competition, one on one, team versus team. Yep. It's a sanctioned event. Yep. From, uh, with the Florida Barbecue Association. Yes. And the competition is fierce. I mean, I'm, I'm there, been there virtually every single year. And uh, it is really interesting to watch the preparation, walk around, talk to the, uh, the people that are doing the barbecue. And they're real open. They'll talk to you, say, hey, this is what I do. You know, sometimes they don't give you all the secret ingredients on the rubs or whatever it may be. But the, the judges themselves, are they local? Do they come in? You know, because they're the ones that are going to decide who's the best of the best and, you know, who's second, third, fourth, you know, all that type uh, of thing. Good, 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 good question. They're all sanctioned judges, so they've all had to have training to be the judge <laughs> to taste the barbecue and what they're looking for. And, uh, and uh, they come from all over the state. And actually, probably some are even from out of state. So uh, they're coming from, from everywhere. And uh, to... And I don't know how they do it because there's so much good barbecue out there. I mean, out of uh, the top 10 teams in Florida, I think all of those are there. And then in the top uh, 10 teams in the country, I know we got at least five of them, if not more there. I cannot wow. picture and all this, but you got some really, 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 really good teams, you know, that are there. Uh, you know, going uh, going after the grand championship here. So both in the new electric pro division and the back, public's backyard guys. And uh, you know, we don't. I don't know. You know, for me going out there, it's hard for me to judge. I love them. They're all grand champions for being there. You know, <laughs> at the competition. But somebody's got to do it because they're, they're, they're it, right? competing for eleven thousand dollars worth yeah. of prizes. So yeah, it's serious business. Cash plus prizes. Yeah. yeah, this is the real deal. This is like what you would see on uh, Barbecue Pitmaster or some of the other series. Actually, Myron Mixon will be there. You know, himself in person yeah. and. 
he's uh, you know three-time world champ right there. You know, it's there, and uh, he loves our event. The teams say that we got something very special right here in Polk County Winter Haven. These guys go all over the country, mm -hmm. and they say we got one of the best competitions in the entire country. So that's from them. That's not us talking. So that's pretty flattering. And, and you've got a new division this year, a professional division, correct? Well, the professional division's always uh, has always been there, you know, with the with the pro division. So that's the main con core of the contest. Oh, okay. All right. So and uh, it's uh, quite a few teams. I don't know, reckon right off the top of my head, in the pro end of it, it's probably 80, uh, 60 teams probably out of the 80 teams are in the pro On division. The, pro side, the other I think. 20 okay. are in okay. the uh, backyard okay. division. So, and they compete in four categories, which is uh, pork ribs, pork butter, pork shoulder, brisket, and chicken. And then pork butter, butt, 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 butt. butt. <laughs> pork butt. Did I say that? pork butt or I heard, I heard or you. Or pork his, shoulder, his, not pork butter. His hearing's going at his age. <laughs> <laughs> and so, not only will those type of meats be available, which are the the best, and. Uh, you know, lots of other great barbecue flair. And, and Mark, you kind of hit it. You know, you can go around if you're a backyard enthusiast guy. Yeah. These guys and gals that are going to be competing are the best. And after they get through with their competition portion, which the last mm -hmm. turn is at two, they'd be glad to answer any tips and questions you got, you know. Yeah. And you can learn some great secrets that you can take home to use in your backyard and impress your, your neighbors or your coworkers <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> okay, well, what's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite category? ribs or believe it or not i don't get to eat much of this thing we're running hard and and uh and and uh working i like i love i love the i love the uh ribs i love the pulled pork all right <laughs> well, i know what the answer is for frank his his favorite category his or his favorite food is is his next plateful yeah. so. uh, <laughs> that's about me too <laughs> I do like to eat. Well, with that, <laughs> with that, we need to go to break. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks a million for coming on. This is, I look forward to this every single year. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great event. Mm -hmm. go, and, and Walsh, I think you did a, a wonderful job. And, and with some passion, too, talking about the kids. And uh, the, 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 the event, the competition really benefits our community. We and that's a, what it's all about. We, yeah. owe a, we owe a lot of people, the public, you know, without, you know, without the public, Right. You know, the whole event tanks, yep. but we owe a lot of people for the success of this thing, and uh, and it, and and I want them to know they've saved clubs this event, right. and what that what does that mean? It doesn't mean a building, it means they've saved kids, yeah. because you know, and they've saved me because I didn't have to stand in front of my kids and tell them I wasn't going to be there no more, yeah. and I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate what you do for our community. And thanks for joining us. Can today, we give John. them the website? Yes, Absolutely. you can. That's important. www.boysandgirlsbbq.com. There you and go. You go there, all the information you need on everything. February 1st, 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And uh, we look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you very so much, Neil. Thanks, Mark. You betcha. Appreciate well, you. everybody, one of the sports that is really, really growing in this country, in fact, it's the second fastest growing sport in the United States right now, and that's rugby. We have the ACRA women's rugby team, a little feature on them, what they're doing, what they've been up to. Check this out. Mark and Neil will be back right after this. Stick around. The, uh, the very first American Collegiate Rugby Association uh, Championship. We have eight of the best teams from around the country here. So uh, a lot of people from above the Mason-Dixon line who are very excited to be down in this great Florida weather. Rugby is comprised of uh, 15 players on the pitch, uh, broken down in what we call forwards and backs. It's run on uh, two 40-minute halves on a continual clock, just like uh, soccer is. 
and a what you would call a touchdown is actually called a try in rugby and that's worth five points. If you make the conversion after that try, that's an extra two points. You can also kick on a penalty or a running drop kick and that would be worth three points similar to a field goal in football. Some of the key positions, like I said, were your backs, you have your scrum halves and your fly halves and your fullbacks and in the front we call the uh, scrum down is the uh, props, hookers and blocks along with some flankers. It's a great sport. It's um, a pure sport, just like um, like you see with soccer. It's a lot of team team effort, uh, in, no individualism, and it, uh, it's no pads. Unlike football, nonstop action. You don't have uh, timeouts. You don't have uh, any type of uh, time to call plays. It's basically a lot of thinking and um, you know on the run. A lot of smart smart plays needed, and it's just a, it's just a lovely sport. There are many women's sports that sort of hide their contact. Um, women's rugby embraces it. It is exciting, um, it's passionate. You don't have to know anything about the game to enjoy it. Myrtle Lake Complex is, um, it's top notch. The girls do prefer uh, grass but a lot of times when we play on grass pitches, they're not uh, as pristine as this grass here. So we have um, you know, this beautiful complex that everybody's in awe with. The Bermuda grass is nice and soft, and it's manicured just like a golf course. Uh, you, you couldn't ask for a better day and a better pitch to play on rugby. The fields are amazing. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I know how much work goes into it. It's amazing how difficult it can be to grow grass particularly when you put a lot of heavy stuff on it. And then the, the people have been um, really great. They've really helped us make this the kind of event that the women deserve. I'd love to be, come back here every year and make this an annual event. everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson along with Neil Duncan, my co-host. And this segment is being brought to us by Contempo Vacation Rental Homes, located up at uh, near the corner of I-4 and 27. Great opportunity to uh, take the old fogey and the stogie if they're visiting your family in Polk County and get them a vacation rental home. And that was a commercial at one time. You don't remember that I one? must have missed that one. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, Contempo Vacation Homes, a great partner of Tourism and Sports Marketing, but a good, uh, a good uh, thing for us in Polk County because with the number of them that we have in the county, you know, we have the uh, hotels and motels, but also the vacation rental homes. Big business, big, uh, big like economic impact. Yeah, seventy five hundred of them, but it's uh, it's certainly an economic boost and and uh, heck of an asset for us here in in Polk County. Well, in uh, in high school, you know, a lot of our viewers have played basketball, played football, swimming, golf, whatever it may be. Uh, one of the sports I played or participated in was wrestling up in the great state of Wisconsin where it's a huge deal like it is in Oklahoma and Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two of the best of the best right here in Polk County in the state of Florida. And, you know, Lake Gibson has really had a... Oh. A long history of, of good, a good wrestling program. Great it seems program. to follow school for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. But Sedarian Perry, David, thanks, thanks for joining us, gentlemen. It's good to see you. Good to see kind you. Kind of quiet for wrestlers. Usually wrestlers. Are, <laughs> they just uh, go and get it done. Yeah, and that's how these guys are. And uh, Sedarian, a 11th grader, like uh, Gibson, correct? And yes, David, sir. you're a, a senior this year. Yes, sir. Uh, great. Great program at Lake Gibson, so uh, great to be involved. Tell us about Lake Gibson and what Lake Gibson Wrestling is all about. Um, Lake Gibson Wrestling is about you know, getting in there, working hard, mm -hmm. and uh, doing everything you got to do to win the match, and coming out and just going hard is our biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Coming out, being yeah. strong wrestlers. Like, you can't quit. Like if you quit, you just make it hard on yourself. 
and it won't be a good day. How, when did you start wrestling? Freshman year after football season ended. Oh, really? Yes, sir. So you yes. never wrestled before? No, sir. Wow. And you qualified for states last year? Yes, sir. Wow. That's, that's you're a short, you're a that's a short turnaround. turnaround. One year? Yes, sir. How about wow. you, David? That's pretty impressive. Freshman. Freshman. You hadn't wrestled before? No. Ever? No. And you guys are state qualifiers. You guys are sitting at 18-2 and two this year. And as in the last two or three years, um, ended up uh, state runner up to, to Brandon. Of course, Brandon's had a very successful program over yes, the sir. years. But uh, uh, what does it mean to have the state finals in your home community in Lakeland at the Lakeland Center? Well, uh, first, I mean, it's it's easier on the team. We're not traveling right. hours and hours and stuff. And it's good because all your family and stuff is able to come out and see you. And, you know, it's your home. You want to protect your home and you want to show like, this is our stomping grounds and so. Right. So, Darren, you said that you played football. Both you guys played football. Yes, sir. sir. Okay, what, what what position do you play? I play cornerback. So you're speedy. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about football is, you know, and, uh, all the training and that type of stuff makes an easy transition into wrestling because of the endurance it is. So one of the biggest things, especially if you get in the third period, or you know, it's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, it wears you down. It's, it, it is an endurance sport, but it's very much a strength sport, too. And uh, being cornerback, uh, you know, that uh, uh, aerobic, it, you know, wrestling combines two things. It combines uh, aerobic and anaerobic, yeah. a lot of strength stuff. As you look at the, this coming season, biggest competition for Lake Gibson and for yourself, any specific wrestler that you're like, I can't wait to get on the mat with this guy. Probably Brandon High School. Brandon? Brandon, yes, yeah. Okay, because they're that good. I mean, it's a challenge for you. That's a good attitude, real good attitude. Yeah. How about an opponent? Is there anybody that's like, you know, you've got your eye on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin this guy. And, Is it know, the wrestler from Brandon High yeah. School? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, as you get, uh, as uh, like I said, 18 and 2 on the season so far, um, and getting ready for the, is it the districts, or, or how does that match up? Is it the same in, in wrestling as uh, basketball or football and baseball? Or are you guys within districts? Yeah, we're in. Uh, oh, districts is next week. Yeah, okay, that's coming up, and then that's the qualifier to get to the to, Lakeland yeah, Center yes, ultimately. Sir. Okay, um, and and having lost to Brandon for the state title the last three years, it's kind of why you've you've kind of got them in your 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 sights. Uh, but you can't look past anybody. Is there anybody in the districts or regional levels that you guys uh, see that that might uh, maybe stop you from being able to make it back to the Lakeland Center? Um, we don't look at it as letting anybody stop us. Mm -hmm. We just look at it as another step to the state tournament. So we don't try to go in thinking, oh, this guy might stop me. Right. You know, we're going in with They're going to have positive. to beat you yeah, you're gonna have to, <laughs> if you beat yeah. them. This, That's good. this is a question a lot of folks probably don't know but or know a lot about. When do you have your weigh-ins? Regular match. Let's say you're wrestling Winter Haven. Um, probably a couple hours. It's either a couple hours before the match or if it's a two to depend on the tournament. If it's a two-day tournament, it's Friday and Saturday weigh-ins yeah. are usually early in the morning, or uh, if it's Friday, it's later in the evening. So yeah, I, I remember, you know, when I was wrestling, um, and, and said, Aaron, you you, uh, you looked like you were closer to my weight when I was when I was in high school. But um, when we weighed in, it was always not always, but sometimes it was hit or miss. You go, man, I'm close. I don't know if I'm going to make it. So you, you know, you run, you put the sweatsuit on, you do whatever you have to do to get get down. You do the weigh-in, boy, I tell you, the candy, the junk food, <laughs> you know, you just shovel it in because you're so hungry. You know, is that is that pretty much still the, the routine? Little well, inside uh, secrets here? Coach tries to cut us back on the candy. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> don't need to crash. No moon pies in RC Cola, guys? <laughs> well, let's, talk, let's talk about, of course, you're in, you're in your season right now. We just talked about that. But what are you guys doing the rest of the year because – you don't just show up when season starts uh, to wrestle at Lake Gibson or really any school, but with the success you guys have had, do you guys travel around as a club team or are you going to other places in the country to wrestle? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, this is my first summer, like, going with, staying with the wrestling team all year. And as a club, we went to Disney Duels, we wrestled there, we went to Michigan, and it kind of helped me get, become a better wrestler. Right, because practice makes perfect, right? You got to get sure. out there, you got to do it. Davis, tell us a little bit about your experiences over the years. Um, off season is where we really get after it because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to 
make the most improvement and learn. Um, so we go to a lot of different camps. We've been to Michigan, like you said. Uh, we went to Iowa last summer. So we travel all around and try to get the best competition. How do you find the competition up in Michigan? Uh, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's all good wrestling up there. Yeah. Well, it's you know a little different down here. We can be outside yeah. 365 days of the year and, yeah. and so on. So, you know, Sedarian, you uh, obviously have excelled in the, in the world of sports and and uh, still academics is is number one. Are you looking for a scholarship? Do you think you're on the road to uh, going to a you know college down the road here? On Hopefully, yes, sir. All right. Where do you think you? What do you have your eyes on? Um, I really don't know. I haven't like looked into it yet. Yeah. But you don't even know what you want to eat for dinner tonight. <laughs> do <you? laughs> Neither do I. Well, David, you're Probably a little bit closer to tonight. that. Uh, this is your That's senior good. year. Are you in the process of trying to go further with wrestling after high school? Um, I'm really undecided right now. I don't. I mean, I'm looking at. Uh, Working in law enforcement, actually, and staying Great. local. So. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Darren, how about you? I don't know either. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. You just want to get through the end of the segment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sedaria yeah. sounds a lot like me. I like him already. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what, what, what weight do you guys wrestle at? Um, 220. I wrestle 126. 126. I was 95 and 102. Back then, the weights were a little bit different. Yeah. Wow, really? Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Neil, you uh, want to, you know, maybe get in the down position and, no. you know, let uh, David uh, show you his best breakdown move? No. I'm like some people. I know my limitations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself here on TV. Well, guys, we know that the, uh, the end of the season, you got districts coming up, and we certainly wish you good luck. And uh, you. we love having the... the wrestling state finals in Lakeland at the Lakeland Center and we hope to see you there and uh, if we find out you're there maybe we'll send our T PG TV crew down there to, to cover it but uh, good luck to you guys and uh, hopefully we'll hear good results absolutely guys it's a pleasure to meet you we're gonna nice be watching you. your careers now okay <laughs> absolutely. all right so hey, keep hang tight. Hey, let's get let's get these guys back next year. absolutely I'd love to have them back see how this year went and uh, hopefully you'll come back both as state champions we look forward to it Yes, sir. Gentlemen, sir. thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, Neil, we've uh, one of the events that we are so proud of is the Major League mm -hmm. Scramble with the Detroit Tigers, mm -hmm. and we have some great footage coming up. Yeah, uh, we're actually going to look at the footage from last year because the event will be uh, February mm -hmm. 24th uh, at Grasslands, a partnership with the Detroit Tigers, and a fantastic event. But to get you excited for this year's event, we thought we'd take a look back at last year's event that was at Cleveland Heights. So check out this footage. We'll be right back here on Sports Central. Neil Duncan here for Sports Central. We're at the 18th annual Major League Scramble here at Cleveland Heights. The Detroit Tigers, the City of Lakeland, Polk County Sports Marketing, all have come together to bring this annual event. You've got stars of yesterday, like Al Kaline, to the skipper of the team, Jimmy Leland, all the way to mega superstar Justin Verlander here at Cleveland Heights. Let's take a look at some of the action. Catching up now with Justin Verlander and Justin, uh, you're a staple of this event. Uh, come out each year. We want to thank you and uh, ask you, what makes this event so special for the Tigers? Uh, it's just you know a fun time. We get to come out here and uh, you know really support this town and uh, you know get to meet new people every year. And it's a great event and it's just fun to get out here and uh, and play. 77th year that the Tigers have been spring training here in Lakeland. What does that relationship mean to you as a player on this team? Well, you know it means a lot. I actually uh, live down here in Lakeland, so. Uh, obviously, I know that um, you know we're an integral part of this uh, this town, and um, you know we're, we're kind of uh, uh, implemented uh, ourselves and in, into the culture of this city. And uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun since I've been down here, and I love it down here. That's why I moved. You just never know who you're going to catch up with at the Major League Scramble. I'm here with Eric Michaels from the Max Morning Show with Eric and Mike. And uh, 
How you hitting it, bud? <laughs> Horribly, but it's a pleasure to be out here. Thank you, Neil, for everything that you do for us and allowing us to come out here and be a part of the big event today. Keep that up. Keep going. Absolutely, because after all, when you think Polk County Sports Marketing, you think Neil Duncan, and I'm standing next to the man right here. <laughs> Here with Bill Tinsley, special liaison to the Detroit Tigers for the city of Lakeland and Bill, another uh, Major League Scramble here at Cleveland Heights. Fantastic. It's our 17th and uh, Scramble, Major League Scramble in Polk County. And uh, of course, now it's the Tigers, uh, Major League uh, Scramble. We're so excited to have the quality of players we've got out here today. The, uh, there's a bunch of fans here, a bunch of sponsors, a lot of people having a great time. Beautiful day today. Absolutely. 77 seasons now with the city of Lakeland, the longest standing relationship in Major League Baseball. First of all, how, do, how does the city continue to maintain that relationship and some exciting things coming down the road here uh, for the Tigers and the city of Lakeland? The, uh, it is a 77 spring. We're very proud of that fact. Um, that, that doesn't just happen. It happens because of an organization like the Tigers. Uh, their dedication to our community, uh, our community's dedication to an embracement of that club. Uh, of course, uh, the Michigan folks make up a big piece of us um, and who we are as uh, this team's been here long enough that uh, a lot of folks have reestablished residency here. But there, there are some exciting things on the horizon. Uh, our Tiger contract is due and uh, due, it, it comes up in 2016. Seems like a while away, but that's three years. And uh, we've, we've been working for the past summer looking at projects that uh, and stadium improvements uh, that are needed for player development and other business changes that uh, that will help carry us to the next uh, to the next contract level. And to accomplish those, you have to start now. And uh, we've been very busy all summer. Uh, we'll work on it this uh, uh, in the spring pretty heavily, and then hopefully move forward uh, and see some actual changes to stadium for the fans and player development areas this next two years. I caught up with Ron Myers, Director of Florida Operations for the Detroit Tigers. And uh, Ron, we'll talk a little bit about this event, the 18th Annual Major League Scramble. The Tigers have been a long, long-standing participant of the event. Really couldn't do the event without you. Talk about the relationship with the City of Lakeland and the Detroit Tigers. Well, in Polk County Sports Marketing and the county, of, um, everybody jumps in and makes this uh, an annual event. But when you look at the other spring training camps throughout Arizona and Florida, uh, this one stands out. This one continues to survive and the players i mean to get as many players as we have and coaches to come out here they enjoy it just as much and it's not only about the competition against each other but the, the friendships that are made here uh, the relationships that are formed uh, this is a fun fun event and very unique and the sports segment Number three. Yeah. That was uh, pretty good. I kind of biffed that one. <laughs> Speaking of biffing, <laughs> this, <laughs> yes, those things do happen. And by the way, the segment's being brought to us by Hollywood Window Tinning and Signs right in Bartow, Florida. And so I can't just be the only one with egg on my face. What I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to assassinate my co host <laughs> right in front of your eyes. I thought we learned you better than wear a white shirt when you do an interview. Are you going to change that for this year? No. <laughs> <laughs> because if I wear a white shirt, then I don't have to do it this year. <laughs> no, I, I want to apologize to Kate West from uh, PGTV for having worn a white shirt at their Major League Scramble because I've been informed not to ever do that again. So I will make sure that I don't do that. And apparently my hat was too low, too. Anyways. <laughs> He admitted his sin. He is a good man. You are forgiven, my son. All right. <laughs> our, next, uh, our next guest here on Sports Central is, is one of our own, uh, Mark Zimmerman from Polk County Tourism and Sports Marketing. But this time of year, we have a lot, no, don't stop me. We have a lot of events going on here in the county as it is the very busy season. And Mark's going to come on and talk to us about some of the, the bigger events that we have. And Mark, welcome to the show. Well, thanks. Thanks, Mark. Apparently the teleprompter was rolling. Neil couldn't stop. Uh, no, no, it wasn't a teleprompter. No it was teleprompter Mark in my ear. Show. We don't use them. Yeah. <laughs> Forbidden, stricken from the obelisk. <laughs> See how I have to do this? Central Florida Collegiate Invitational, Rust Map Baseball, coming back for another year. And uh, how many years has it been here in Polk County now? Six. 
I'm asking questions like that. <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> Tell us about the event for those that may not know. Uh, well, <clears throat> it's a it's it's really the largest collegiate invitational. Um, it's a collegiate spring training. It's not, they're, but they're not preseason games like you get with the Tigers. These games actually count towards their record. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have 200 plus teams, and we've had that every year um, for the six years. They come in, they stay about a week, they play six, seven, eight games at each each team, and they really, I mean, it really provides a great impact to our community. You know, Mark, one of the one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't know, the Cleveland Indians. Um, decided for several reasons to uh, abandon their home and uh, mm -hmm. spring training home that is in, in Winter Haven at the Chain Lakes facility to uh, to move to Arizona and uh, that obviously would have left an enormous economic hole during the, the peak season which you know the tourism industry could ill afford particularly mm -hmm. the, the businesses in Winter Haven that how did that all transpire because it didn't miss a beat you know, you had Cleveland Indians one spring. I mean, you just don't pick up stuff like that. No, fortunately, there was a, there was a lot of movement going on with all the teams. So the Indians were moving, uh, the Rays were moving out of St. Pete. Uh, the group that we working with, Russ Matt Baseball, um, they had they had a, a semi home, but really they were spread out, they were spread out among several places. Mm -hmm. um, but they kind of had a home down in Port Charlotte from when the Rangers left there mm -hmm. and went to Arizona. So when the Rays ultimately decided to move down to to Port Charlotte, they lost that. That was kind of their smaller home. It, it's certainly not what we have here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a smaller version of that. And so we ended up being able to negotiate with them and, and uh, sign a long-term contract with them to move their event. And they had maybe about 100 teams at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then they had smaller pockets of teams around the state um, and some in Arizona as well. We were able to get them to consolidate that, uh, have one location where you were able to use the Chain of Lakes uh, and the six fields they have there in Winter Haven, but we also added the five fields at Lake Myrtle and Auburndale. Mm -hmm. So 11 fields the whole time. Now, fortunately for us, it's still not enough um, mm -hmm. because the, the peak periods of the event, we'll use a dozen other fields. So we'll, we'll go and we'll play at Henley Field, uh, Southeastern, the two fields at Lake Bonnie, uh, several high schools um, all over the county, not just, not just Auburndale, Winter Haven, but playing at Kathleen and Jenkins and Frostproof, um, Haines City. So really this event is not just having an impact in Auburndale and Winter Haven, it's really spread across the entire county and having impacts in, in each community. We talk about being spread across the community, it's also spread across the many divisions of mm -hmm. collegiate baseball. Talk to us a little bit about that and when does it start? The event actually starts, uh, let me give you the exact date. The first game is on February 17th. Mm -hmm. you start off with one game that day. Um, and I'll go through some of the numbers yeah. for you, but it really um, <clears throat> it, it builds up, uh, and there's there's a two weeks kind of in the middle of Oct uh, middle of it's March. Like a bell shaped curve. Kind yes, of. exactly. Okay. <clears throat> the middle of March it builds up, and then it tapers off um, towards the end of March. But it's it's a it's a great impact, um, and then so it end, it'll end on April first, um, and really I mean it's it's the teams are coming from all over the, the United States, mainly the Midwest and the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Um, and and there because there are a lot of different teams out there. You 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 know the teams you instantly think of are the big teams, the Division One teams. Um, but that's actually a, the smallest portion of this group. The largest group are the Division Three teams. Um, and really, the Division Three teams that are coming in, they have some great rankings. Um, and and these are these are quality baseball for Division Three. There's 11 of the preseason top 30 Division Three teams will be coming down for spring training and will be competing mm. in our county. Um, the, the highest one there is Southern Maine. Uh, they're a Division Three school uh, in Maine. They're the number two preseason ranked team. Um, they actually finished second last year. I was looking up their, their record. They finished second. They, they went to the IF game in the Division Three World Series. They, they pushed it to the final game and they mm. just barely lost. Um, but a couple of, couple of teams uh, Mark's probably familiar with, a couple of the Wisconsin teams, Stevens Point and mm -hmm. Whitewater. Uh, two perennial powerhouses right. in Division Three will be down here as well. And really, the list goes on, and, and, a, and a lot of different groups um, will be down here for Division Three. Um, but they also have some Division One teams, Division Two teams. I think we have six of the of the uh, Division Two uh, top thirty preseason teams coming in as well. well. I think there's a misconception too that uh, if it's not Division One, if it's Division Two, II, Division Three, that 
they're somehow not as good as the Division One play. And if you go out there and watch, uh, mm -hmm. that's absolutely not true. And there's a reason Division One teams don't schedule a lot of these teams. Oh yeah, you don't want to lose to them. No, exactly. And, and you know, right. feel like you've been exposed. Of course. And if, and really, the important thing for us is is their money spends the same. <laughs> that's uh, right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's really whether you're a Division One ball player or a Division Three ball player. That's a dollar is a dollar. A dollar is a dollar. And right. so that all that money coming into our community is, is all the same. Yep. Mark, how, how many room nights? Do they, they book on an annual basis? I mean, you're, you're talking uh, almost six weeks, mm -hmm. um, over 200 teams. That's a, a lot of overnight stays, a lot of meals, a lot of gas, a lot of souvenirs. Um, I mean, how many overnight stays yeah, are you so talking we do, about? Yeah, so we do a lot of research on this. Mm -hmm. um, we get specific numbers from the teams, so we know those exactly. Uh, and then we do a lot of research with the fans that are coming in because mm -hmm. you know a lot of these teams, their parents are, are still coming in. They're still coming in to watch them, and, and they get the advantage of, hey, we're in Florida, mm -hmm. where most of these people are from up north. They get the chance to come down. Um, so total is about 27,000 room nights, um, which is huge. I mean, that, that's yeah. a massive number. 27,000. Yes. Not 2,700. No. 27,000. 27,000 room nights over, over about a six-week period just, just from the, the college baseball teams coming in and their fans. And that doesn't even take into account that, you know, locals, and when I say locals, I don't mean just Polk County, mm -hmm. but uh, there's alumni chapters yep. all over the country for different universities and colleges, so you also have those people coming in, and they may not end up staying overnight, but when they come in, they're spending money in the community, whether it be stopping off to eat, right. doing some shopping, catching some other entertainment in our county, so not only are it's the, the economic impact from the teams, from the fans that are coming in, but there's also locals that are that are adding to that. Well, and we really, every year, we get several uh, alumni groups that mm -hmm. will call and ask about uh, local caterers, because they're, they're, right. they're pushing out to their alumni group, they're gonna have a gathering at one of the baseball games, and they'll hire a local caterer to come in and do that. So you're right, it's, it's not just the teams and the fans, it is, it is some of those people that were associated with those schools that are now coming back and spending time in our community. And you're right, it, it may not be creating, that portion of it may not be right. creating some overnight stays, but they are, they are definitely driving Impact. some revenue in the county. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark, one of the, the questions that, that I know you guys get on a, on a regular basis from people that are, that are familiar with this event, this mm -hmm. six weeks of training and games coming down, is, hey, I used to go to, uh, you know, University of, uh, or Ohio State University, who's played in this event. Right. I would really like to be able to see them. Are they playing today or whatever? Where can people go to find out um, what the schedule is? Maybe their their former school, you know, their mm -hmm. alumni, and we'll find out where their uh, their school is playing or interact with them. Maybe get together with them. Where can they get this information? There, really, there's lots of different local places. Uh, I know the Ledger normally will publish the the schedule for the upcoming day, mm -hmm. as well as some of the results that they have received. Uh, we have the entire schedule on our website, centralfloridasports.com. Um, so, you know, and that's, it's, it's on you there every day. spell that all out, centralfloridasports.com. Yes, completely spelled out. Dot com. Yep. Okay. And that is, so that entire schedule for, for the whole thing is on there, and you can really kind of sort through it, look to see what schools are coming, when they're going to be here, um, and, and the opportunities to see them. Because you're right, they, they may be playing at Channel Lakes one day, but they may be playing at Henley Field the next. Okay. And so, so they don't play at the same facility. No, they definitely they move around quite a bit. You know, is there you know, a lot of people using mobile apps more so? In fact, that trend is increasing. Can, is there a mobile site that they can go to with that schedule on? Or yeah, of course, our website, the visitcentralflorida.org website, will also have the schedule, and that that we have a mobile friendly site there. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to navigate, and you can find the entire schedule there as well. Okay. Well, I know we have the. Uh, softball version of this starting here in Polk County this year and we were going to talk about spring break sports in the segment but we've used up the whole segment to talk about <laughs> rest which is not a bad thing but why don't we keep uh, Mark here and come back for the local update and discuss those things too sounds great so we just keep rolling we'll just keep going I love it all right okay buddy well it <clears throat> call him Zimmy but uh, for those of you who don't know Mark Zimmerman is the director of uh, sports sales and marketing for Central Florida Tourism and Sports Marketing. And, and Mark, there's, uh, there's been an enormous amount of attention given to, uh, to spring training worldwide. You know, collegiate baseball is uh, not quite there yet, and even less quite there yet. Girls fast pitch softball, formerly an Olympic sport. A lot of famous young ladies uh, have made their name, and uh, you're bringing in some of the best of the best for a similar uh, event as Russ Matt called the Rebel Spring Games. Tell us a little bit about that one. 
Sure. The uh, the Rebel Spring Games. It's a similar format. Mm -hmm. College teams uh, coming in. Uh, it's, again, it's their. They'll call it a spring training, but they're not preseason games. They they are their actual games that count. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we recruited this event. This event had been going on for a number of years uh, in the uh, Orange County, Osceola County, kind of Ocoee area. Mm -hmm. uh, so we recruited this event. It's brand new to Polk County this year, but the event by no means is brand new. Um, so this year we'll have 68 teams, 68 girls fast pitch teams mm -hmm. uh, across Division One, Two, II, and Three uh, coming in. Um, it's and it's pretty evenly split uh, amongst those divisions. It's you know a little over 20 in, e in each of those divisions coming in and playing same concept, playing against the teams that are in at that time, mm -hmm. and and playing in those games. Um, so those 68 teams are going to come in. They're going to play 297 softball games. Um, they'll start March 2nd and they'll wrap up March 18th. So this year a, li a little shorter time frame than than what the baseball is. Obviously baseball is a little longer. And they play a few more games. Baseball plays 817 uh, as compared to the, the girls that are playing the 297. 297 but games. 297 games. And they'll be... In a two-week span. In, uh, it's about a three-week span. Three weeks, okay. Um, so it, it's a little kind of in between two and three. Um, and, but, but it's a lot of games. They'll play at uh, the Auburndale Softball Complex and the Diamond Plex in Winter Haven. And uh, just wonderful places to play. And really, just uh, you know, great partners of ours, City of Auburndale and the City of Winter Haven. I was just going to say uh, to that point, talk about the, it, you know, you talk about Rust Mat, you talk about Rebel Spring Games. These things don't just happen. It takes no. a lot of different <laughs> municipalities, and talk about that and what it takes to pull all this off. It, it's really, I mean, because these these are pretty nonstop. When you start mm -hmm. talking about five softball fields or five baseball fields playing from eight in the morning till dark if they don't have lights. If they have lights, they're continuing playing on a game or two in the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's pretty nonstop, and that's, it's not just like a weekend tournament where you have, okay, hey, Saturday and Sunday, and we're done, and we right. have time to rest. They're going and, and they're continuing to do the next thing every day. I mean, and they have, they have days, their peak day for softball, they're gonna play 45 games. Um, and the peak day for baseball, wow. they actually play 55 games um, in one day. And the 90 lit. games. Yep. And those are, and, and it, excuse me, 100 games. Yeah. yeah. Math was a little off. There. Yeah. And those are almost the same day. The, the two peak days combined for, the, for both of them are March 13th and 14th. And then if you want to go ahead and just throw in the fact that the Tigers are home both those days, there's two more games. So it's 97 games and 92 games, I believe, is the exact number that'll be on. March 13th and 14th. When you talk about the Tigers, we've even partnered with uh, Ron Myers and Zach and the, that group because mm -hmm. when these teams are coming in, obviously we have a spring training team that when the schedules match right. up, they're going over there and they're checking out some of those games. Oh so. yeah, every every time we're over there, which isn't as often as I'd like it to be, <laughs> uh, but every time I'm over there, I, I definitely see that the, the you know because they honor they, they kind of tell what groups are recognize in, who's and there. you'll see the group yeah. the teams that are that are here playing mm -hmm. in our in our tournaments over there catching a Tigers game as well, which is great. Well, Mark, we have a uh, have to go to break here, but I want to hear a little bit more about the uh, a third component of your spring training strategy, and that is the great sport of lacrosse. So uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about that. And one of the things we have and enjoy doing on a regular basis now is we have an athlete spotlight from George Jenkins. We have swimmer Rachel Lolf. And you know, it's kind of an interesting up close and personal. If you remember the old Olympic features that uh, got into the lives and the training and so on of the athletes, you're going to see it right here on Sports Central. Mark O'Neill and Mark Zimmerman will be back right after this. Stick around, everybody. When I was a little girl, like when I was like five years old, I went to a country club. And I first saw the, the blocks for the first time, and I had no idea what they were for. So I asked my mom, what in the world are these things? And she actually got me involved with the, the swim team there called Eagle Brook. And I've been swimming ever since. Um, I swim mainly club. Like, it's a year-round thing where you swim almost all of the year. And then during high school season, I sometimes go to high school practices and sometimes go to club practices, kind of to switch it up a little bit. I think my father is probably my biggest inspiration because he's always there pushing me to do better, helping me to strive for what he thinks I can be, which is great. And I love that he's always there to constantly give me good, positive feedback when I need it and also give me the pointers that I need when I need it. I've always really liked Tim Tebow. 
mostly because um, he's not afraid to be who he is as a person while playing the sport that he loves to play. Like, he's very open with how he feels and how his emotions and his Christianity, of course, too, which is I think is very important in an athlete to be able to inspire so many other people, not only through your sport, but also through your actions and how you live. I really do enjoy biology, which is the class that I'm taking right now. I love to learn about life and life science, and I think it's really an interesting topic because, like, I'm really interested in that kind of stuff. I'm not really sure what college I want to go to yet because I haven't even really thought about it, but I do know that I want to be in the medical field somewhere. I was thinking maybe like surgery or maybe some kind of great doctor, I don't know yet. I think my biggest accomplishment is just being a part of this great relay team because I'm just a sophomore this year. I haven't really had time to really get great in the high school atmosphere. So being with these girls and getting as far as we've gotten like state last year, Winning districts, I mean, it's really a great feeling to be able to feel part of a team in which they're all seniors and I'm a sophomore. It's really great that I can reach them on the level that I can simply because of the sport that we do. Going to state as a freshman really was an unbelievable experience. It's something that you dream about and sometimes you don't know if you really are actually going to be able to make it or not. And when you do, it's, you can't describe it. It's so elating to know that you made it that far. The music I listen to is mainly like Imagine Dragons and soft pop and like soft rock and stuff like that. I actually do have a, a really um, funny superstition and ritual that I do before any kind of race. Um, with the relay girls, we always get in a huddle and we pray before we swim and then we all like we talk and we make sure we pump each other up so that we get ready for our race. And then individually, I always, um, I send a quick prayer to God and then I I slap my thighs and I actually rub my goggles because my goggles have always been lucky and ever since I started rubbing my goggles they haven't broken in a race. My best friend would probably describe me as completely dedicated. Uh, she knows when not to plan things with me because I'm in the pool or I have a swim meet. She understands the sport that I do. She understands how difficult it is to be dedicated and to do all the things that you have to do when you're in a sport that's so demanding. So she helps me out by planning things around my schedule and stuff. I think I would be dedicated because I've spent a majority of my time in the pool and I try and make sure to do the best that I can do not only for myself but for my, my teammates and um, for my coaches. So I think that I'm extremely dedicated. For the medley relay, I swim the backstroke, Hope swims the breaststroke, Kylie usually swims the butterfly, and Lucy swims the freestyle. And then when we are swimming the 400 freestyle relay, which is the one we're going to do at county, um, I go third, and I don't know the rest of the order. I think that it's, um, I, I believe that Lucy swims the first leg, and Hope swims the second leg, I swim the third leg, and then Kylie swims the fourth leg. The relay team is mostly comprised of the faster swimmers on the team, so it wasn't really like we had a choice in who we were swimming with. But I'm really happy that I got to swim with these girls. They're phenomenal athletes, they're great people, and I just enjoy working with them. Hey everybody, welcome back to segment number four of Sports Central. Mark Jackson and Neil Duncan, your host for today's edition. And Neil, you know, we've got, uh, we were talking about vacation rental homes a little bit earlier, and, and we have our fair share, sometimes more than our fair share, of hotels and motels that do a great job accommodating our guests in this segment. It's a long-winded way to say this segment's being brought to you by the Hampton Inn. and uh, Lakeside Village. At Lakeside Village. Yeah. I stand corrected there. But, you know, these the hotels are a really good fit for a lot of sports teams or individuals that are, that are competing of the 200 and... 20 or so events that uh, Mark and his crew bring in on an annual basis, um, that's really the best match, and so we're, we're thankful for that. And joining us once again is Mark Zimmerman, who is the director of tour, or excuse me, of sports sales and uh, and marketing. And Mark, the uh, uh, Russ Mat Baseball, obviously huge economic impact, for 24 million dollars. Rebel Spring Games, somewhere in the neighborhood of. Uh, uh, six or seven million dollars what you're anticipating at least projecting and arguably will be higher than that but uh, there's another sport that you've aggressively gone after which is the fastest growing sport in this country and that is the sport of lacrosse yeah and look, lacrosse has been the fastest growing sport for a long time um, just continues to grow and grow and grow 
Um, obviously, <clears throat> started out as very very regional sport in the Northeast, mm -hmm. um, but really has sprung from there. Um, fortunate part for Florida, obviously, is we have a lot of people from the Northeast who've moved down here. They've brought lacrosse with them, so it's, it's rapidly growing uh, across the country. It's rapidly going growing here in our state as well. Mm -hmm. But we've worked with, again, the same concept. Uh, a lot of these teams, uh, because the, every spring sport, is, it's tough for them to get out and, and get some practice done mm -hmm. before their season starts. So that's why they really look to travel. They go to the warmer destinations like Florida and Arizona and Southern California to get their kind of season kicked off. Mm -hmm. And lacrosse, being a, a spring sport, is no different. Um, now, certainly they don't have quite the numbers that, that your traditional baseball and softball does. Mm -hmm. but they're growing, and we know it's a market that's going to continue to produce good results for us. Um, that event that we host, it's again, same concept with, with a group called Spring Break Sports. Uh, that event is at Northeast Regional Park, uh, which is a county park, uh, new, fairly new, the last couple of years that that park was opened. Uh, it's up there uh, in Davenport, the corner of I-4 and 27. Um, so we have, again, the teams come in, they, they play, uh, and, and they they compete against the other teams that are in, both boys and girls lacrosse, mm -hmm. um, which are, are kind of different sports. If you've ever watched them, they're, they're, not, they're not exactly the same. Um, but they do that, and we have some high school teams coming in for them, for those groups as well. Oh, that's pretty interesting. So you got Russ Matt at all boys, Rebel Spring Games, all girls, and then you have a combination in lacrosse with yep. uh, uh, kind of a co-ed mm -hmm. uh, opportunity there. Well, one of the reasons that uh, we want to talk to you is, you know, there's so many events going on this spring. I mean, they're just pumping millions and millions of dollars into our local economy and creating jobs for our families and and uh, the citizens of, of Polk County, an area that uh, you have really excelled in. I mean, like no other county in the state of Florida, running events. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the width and, and breadth and depth or whatever you want to call it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. One of those events called Warrior Dash coming up next. Yeah. Or very well, soon I should say. Yes, yeah, February 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, Warrior Dash at Triple Canopy Ranch in Lake Wales. Been there a number of years now. Uh, great event. Warrior Dash really it's a, it's a 5k mud run mm -hmm. um, and, it, and they're really the, probably the, the leader in the market. Uh, there's, there's maybe two groups that are the biggest. Uh, we've had both of them here, Warrior Dash and Tough Mudder. Mm -hmm. um, but Warrior, Warrior Dash is definitely the more fun uh, couple, you know, uh, they, the, the more people, they're just, just out there having a good time. You don't have to be a, a seasoned athlete or runner to do it. Um, you get out there, you run over the obstacles, you run through the mud, you grab yourself a, a frosty beverage at the end, and you have <laughs> some fun, uh, you know, listening to their, they, they put on a good, great concert. It's just a fun event. Well, we've also, I'm sorry. No, go right ahead, say, Neil. We've also got um, February 15th, the Yellow Jacket Stomp and Run, and then you have the uh, uh, Color and Glow, and glow 5K, yep. so a lot of events. Of course, the girls, uh, we got wrestling coming up. we got girls and boys basketball state finals, rust mat. Spring uh, we're speeding through the, uh, through the local update, this but you can phenomenal. always go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org for a list of all those events. And, uh, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. It really uh, it's is. It's phenomenal. You know, it's, we, you've got to count your blessings every single day uh, regarding the number of sports, the economic impact that they have on this community, and the opportunity to see world-class uh, athletes and entertainment. It's just phenomenal. So we're greatly appreciative of that. Speaking of appreciative, some of the people that we are appreciative and organizations we are appreciative to and for. Yeah, Mr. Con Duncan. Contempo Vacation Homes, Hampton and Lakeside Village, Hollywood Window Tinning and Signs, The Ledger, and People's Barbecue. Some of the folks made this show possible. Absolutely. Well, just as a reminder, for those of you that are our first time viewers, that is, this show actually airs every single day, and you can check both Neil and Mark following dates and times. This is Mark Jackson. For Neil Duncan and all the crew at PGTV, Mayan Nelson as well, our producer, we appreciate it. We appreciate the Board of County Commissioners. We'll see you again next time.